What is up, everybody? My name is Chris Martinez. I am the host of Operation Agency Freedom. And in this episode, I am going to be speaking about the signs that you need to hire that next person. And I know that like hiring in general is like really, really challenging for 99% of agency owners. And of course, we're coming out of COVID. It's a different time. The world is changing. We're hearing things about the great migration and people not, not wanting to work. And so uh, what I'm going to talk about today is basically the telltale signs that you need to hire that person and also how to decide who you want to hire. So if you struggle with figuring out how you're going to scale your labor, you definitely want to listen to this episode. So I'm going to talk about the bottlenecks that you can have and how you can use those to identify who to hire, how you can use your financials to look at who you need to hire. I'm going to talk about, you know, if I, if I were you, who I would hire based on certain scenarios. So definitely pay attention to this episode because I'm going to answer all the questions that you might have regarding how to scale up your labor and who you need to hire. And of course, if you like this episode and you want to hear all of our other episodes, just make sure that you subscribe so that you get access to everything that we put out, all the new podcast episodes. So with that being said, let's head over to this amazing podcast. All right. Hey guys, welcome back. And like I mentioned today, we are going to talk about the signs that you need to hire that next person. And I know that hiring is very, very challenging. It can also be very, very intimidating, especially if, if you have not hired anybody or if you have not hired many people in the past. And the common question is like, who the heck am I supposed to hire? Like, I don't even know who I'm supposed to hire. So the first thing that I want to talk about is basically let's look at the different departments that you have within your agency. So you're the CEO, I'm guessing. Uh, hopefully you're the CEO, you're the leader, you're the visionary. Then uh, you could potentially have a COO or uh, if you follow the uh, traction US, they call it an implementer uh, or an integrator, I should say. Um, so maybe you have that COO. Then you typically who you're probably more conscious about or the departments that you're more conscious about. You have sales and marketing, right? That's how you're bringing in those new clients. Then you have operations and that's how those projects are getting completed. And then you have finance, which maybe you have a bookkeeper or somebody that helps you manage the finances. I know that I am not good at managing the finances. So I have a team that helps me with that. Then you have HR, which helps to manage your people, make sure that everybody is progressing and that they're staying on track. I think most when, when most people think of HR, they think of just like implementing not fun rules, kind of like Toby from the office. But HR has a very, very important function within your agency. So you have HR and then you have uh, customer experience. Those are the departments that typically, and even if you're an agency of one or two people, you still have these departments within your agency. You just might be doing all of them. So that's the first thing that we want to look at is those different departments. Okay. Next thing is let's look at the bottlenecks. So I'll just give you an example of a very common bottleneck for a smaller agency. They typically have really inconsistent sales. And here's why. So they go out and they sell a bunch of projects or they build up their pipeline and then they send sell a bunch of projects and then they get stuck doing the work and they're not able to focus on business development. So then what happens, right? So they're in the weeds, they're doing the work, they're completing those projects. Maybe it's like a three-month timeline. They complete those projects, and because they have not focused on business development and their pipeline is basically completely depleted, now they're scrambling to try and find new projects. So they have to spend a month or two months prospecting, and then finally they get these new deals, and, and then the cycle just goes on and on and on, where it's like, focusing on sales and then focusing on doing the work and then there's no sales and then focusing on sales and then focusing on doing the work and then so on and so forth. It is really, really difficult to grow any type of business, but especially an agency if you don't have consistent sales and consistent revenue. So that's just one example of a very common bottleneck. So I would start looking at the bottlenecks that you're experiencing. Maybe it's what I just mentioned. Maybe you have really inconsistent sales. If that's the case, 
you need to then figure out who you're going to slide into that position so that you can fix those bottlenecks. Because I'm telling you, if you just think that it's magically going to fix itself or that you're going to find more time or whatever, it is not going to happen. You absolutely need to be conscious of what the bottlenecks are and create an actual plan of how you're going to fix those. Usually, you can't rely just on technology and automation, right? Usually, there's a, a human being that you need to bring into the agency that's going to help you fix these problems. And the other reason why it's so great to bring in a person, especially a problem-solving type of person, is that the challenges that you face are going to evolve over time. So if you bring in the right individual, they're going to be able to help you solve the future problems, not just what you have right now. They'll be able to proactively look at like, hey, we're going to have these issues. This is what I recommend that we do. And then again, you're not the bottleneck. You have somebody else who's looking at fixing those problems for you. So that's another thing to look at is the bottlenecks. Okay. Next thing that I want you to look at, and this requires some self-reflection and just being aware of what you're good at and what you're not good at is let's think about the things that you suck at, right? Be very honest with yourself. Nobody is good at everything. I hate to break it to you. If you think that you're good at everything, you need to ditch your ego and, and be honest with yourself and then look at the things that you really suck at and then look at and see if there are people that you can put into or bring into the company that can help you basically cover your blind spots, right? So me, for example, when I started Dude, we grew really, really fast. And so I was in a scenario where I was managing all these different departments and I had to you know, be very honest with myself and say, the company is not growing at the way that I know that we can. And of all these different departments, I suck at almost all of them. So literally give yourself a score. Say, as a CEO, scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst, how would you rate yourself? So for me at that time, I said, as a CEO, I'm probably like a six or a seven. In the finance department, and I had a partner at the time who was supposed to be doing the finance, but he wasn't. Uh, you know, how, how am I though at, do, at managing the finances? Like literally like a zero. I suck at it. I'm great at analyzing the numbers. I'm not great at getting the numbers. Okay. So finance, I'm a zero. Operations, how am I? Eh, I mean, I mean, I'm not super technical, but my the way that my brain works, I'm very good at creating processes. So I'd probably be like a five, right? Customer experience, I'm like a one. I'm not good at customer experience. I'm good, again, I'm good at creating the processes. I'm not very good at the implementation. And I also just don't know some of the things that the clients care about or that you know makes them happy. So definitely failing in that respect. Human resources, like a one, like one or a two, maybe. I did hire some good people, but overall, I did not, I was not doing a good job. And I also wasn't managing the team. I wasn't helping them or I didn't create a plan for them to continue to grow and be happy within the company. Sales and marketing, probably like six or seven as well. So my strong suits naturally are going to be, you know, obviously being CEO and the visionary of the company and sales and marketing. That was like a couple of years ago. So I still right now run the sales and marketing team, but I am now recognizing that I am becoming a bottleneck again. I am starting to suck at these roles, right? So I'm looking at bringing in new people to solve these problems for me. So it is very, very important that you analyze yourself and that you're honest with yourself and you say, these are the things that I suck at and these are the people that I need to bring into the company because if I am still in charge of these things, I'm never going to grow. The company's never going to grow. I'm always going to be the bottleneck. I'm going to you know, piss off people or whatever it is. Whatever the problems are, be honest with yourself and look at the things that you suck at and then create a plan so that you can start to fill those seats. It's not as easy as you would think, right? You know, like there's a lot of things that you think that you're good at, but honestly, look at the data and determine like, hey, because I'll tell you like uh, two very important things that I've learned over the past few years. The first one, you're always going to be the bottleneck. No matter what it is, you are always, always going to be the bottleneck. So if you want to grow your agency, you have to be honest with yourself and figure out ways to solve those bottlenecks. Okay. The second thing, the agency is a reflection of you. Okay. I'm going to say that again. The agency is a reflection of you. So if you are disorganized, if you're an egomaniac, if you hate hiring people or you feel that people are stupid, whatever it is, if you hate clients, 
it, whatever it is, the, your deficiencies as a human being will come through in your agency. And that will absolutely negatively impact the way that you grow your agency and it'll negatively impact the way that you treat your team and the way that you're able to grow. So you need to be very self-aware and constantly ask yourself, am I doing a good job? Am I the right fit? You know, Am I a bottleneck again? Is there a deficiency in my personality that I need to fix, right? Because no matter what happens in the agency, you can't blame anybody else. It is 100% a reflection of you. All right. So with that being said, let's move on to uh, a more practical way to look at who to hire. Okay. So the next thing is your performa, right? And if you've never done the performa, go to dude school, go through the, the performa training to give you a summary. Basically, the performa is your financial planning document that you use for the entire year. So at the beginning of the year, for example, in January, you're going to do your performer and you're going to say, these are the sales targets that we're going to hit. These are the leads that we're going to bring in that's going to help us to hit those sales targets. Based on those sales targets that we hit and the new projects that we bring in um, and the revenue that we have, this is the budget that I then have to be able to invest in the team, right? This is what I can spend on my operational expenses, so on and so forth. So you basically use your performa as a guide for your growth. Right. And so what I do is obviously I map out the performa at the beginning of the year. And then every quarter I review it and I say, this is, this went according to plan. This did not. And then I make adjustments as we go. The way that you use the performa to base out your hiring is you look at, for example, like growth, right? Or churn. Well, let's just take operations to start. Right. So let's say, you know, we've got all these projects in the pipeline. We closed all these deals. And so we're going to need additional design and development staff, or we're going to need a project manager, right? There's so many projects going on that my existing project manager uh, is completely overloaded. Or, you know, if you're the one doing all the project management, you're going to need somebody to go in and manage those projects for you. Like the scenario that I just mentioned, you know, like if you're getting pulled away from sales and business development because you're working too many hours on actually completing the work post sale, then you can look at your performa and you can say, okay, based on the growth that we're planning, this is who I need to hire. This is when I need to bring that person in. And this is what I can afford to pay them. Right. So absolutely, you can use that performa to map out who you need to to bring on. For us, you know, we do a ton of recruiting, a ton of recruiting. And so we're constantly, well, I constantly work with the HR team and I say, these are the sales targets. This is who we're planning on bringing on, like the number of new clients that we're going to bring on. And so I need you guys to start planning, right? You don't want to be in a position where you have all these projects. Ideally, you don't want to be in a position where you have all these projects and then you're like, holy shit, I got to go find people to do these projects. You do want to ramp up your team prior to you getting bombarded with those projects because there's a ramp up period. There's a learning curve, right? If you are waiting to the last minute, then what's going to happen is that your clients are, the client experience might be not as great as it needs to be, right? Basically, just because your team doesn't know how you operate. Like you're never going to be in a spot where you bring somebody on, they have the technical skills, day one, they jump in and they're able to do everything. It just doesn't work like that. There's always a training period and a ramp up period for that individual. So use your performa to say, hey, our August is going to be absolutely like crazy busy. So what I want to do then is I'm going to start interviewing in June. I'm going to finalize and make the hire in July. And then they're going to be in training for two months so that when we have that dramatic increase in August, they're good to go. You know, the client projects are going to go well. That individual, because they're more trained, they're going to be able to get stuff done more efficiently and faster. So the, the capacity that they'll have is probably going to be higher. So that's the, you know, what you want to do with your performance, basically map out who you're going to need and then just, you know, reverse engineer when you're, when you're going to have to start hiring those folks. Very, very important. Like I mentioned, if you've never done a performa before, go to dudeschool.io. We have a whole training on there on how to do your performa. It's totally free. It is absolutely revolutionary for your agency. All right. So let's talk about specifics of who you need to hire. Okay. So the first thing that I already mentioned was the sales part of it. So I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail on that. If you have inconsistent sales, it is nearly impossible for you to grow your agency. I'm just telling you, you're not going to be able to grow if you have like peaks and valleys in your sales. 
I, in my mastermind group, I go over those with the clients all the time. Like it does not pencil out. And by all means, use your performa and pencil it out. If you have inconsistent sales in your agency, you're not going to be able to grow. So if that's the case, then you need to hire a project manager or an operations manager. Or if you want to still work in the production work, then you need to bring on a salesperson. Personally, I think that if you're under a million dollars in revenue, you need to be involved in the sales. Once you hit that seven figure mark and you've got a solid lead gen plan and you can also keep the clients happy, then maybe you could look at bringing on a salesperson. That's what I did basically. Until we hit a million, I was doing the sales. And so most likely you're going to need a project manager, right? So somebody who's going to help you manage all the projects that come in. So you help close the deals, you do a kickoff or you know hand the projects off to the operations team and the, and the project manager, and then they basically make sure that everything gets completed. And then you are constantly focusing on keeping that pipeline of new deals healthy and just continuing to grow your, your sales. So that's the first thing that I would look at hiring is a project manager. And of course, if you go to dude school again, we have a whole training on how you can hire that project manager. Project managers are absolutely worth their weight in gold. I say nine times out of 10, that's the person that you need to hire first. Or if you have a bottleneck, most of the times it's the project manager who's going to be the, the most important hire to help you fix that problem. Okay. The second thing that I want you to look at is your customer churn right? So if you are losing clients, it's probably a good investment to look at bringing on a customer experience person. So just really quickly, customer experience, their main KPI or the metric that determines success for them is keeping that churn number down, making sure that clients are not canceling, right? It, it is also nearly impossible to grow an agency if your churn is too high. What is too high? And this is something that kind of pisses me off with all the gurus who talk about, you know, selling a bunch of clients is that your churn, your client churn should be less than 10% every month. If you're a smaller agency and you don't have a lot of clients, it should absolutely be less than 5%. Okay. Churn will absolutely kill you. It's impossible to grow the agency. You're not going to get a very good valuation. If you ever want to sell, by the way, you're never going to get a good valuation if your churn is too high. So you need to keep your clients happy. You need to get them results. You need to provide a great customer experience. You need to make sure that they're staying and that they're referring, right? It typically will make sense to bring on somebody to just manage the client churn every single month, as opposed to you know just letting it be how it is. Let's just simple math here, right? Let's say that you're losing $5,000 a month in, in revenue, monthly recurring revenue because clients are canceling, right? Why not bring on somebody part-time or overseas, pay them 1500 bucks a month, and they have to get that churn number down. Bring your churn from, let's say 15%, get it down to 5%. They will pay for themselves in the first freaking month. Bring that individual on, help them, or actually give them a broad template of the customer experience that you believe is going to help the clients stay happy and stay with you. And then empower that person to make it better, right? We did this with Aaron. Aaron came in, our churn was over 16%. She came in, she got it down to 10% in one month. And then it's consistently been like under 6% for this quarter, which is amazing. If you know anything about about valuation or lifetime customer value, you use your churn number to basically calculate your lifetime customer value. And uh, the difference between a 6% churn and a 16% churn is huge, huge. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars for us, for us per month. So it typically makes a lot more sense to bring on a customer experience person to help you keep your clients and retain your clients. Uh, than to just say, this is what it is, right? Next person that you want to hire is finances. So if you don't know what your gross margin is, if you don't know what your net income is, if you don't know how to make good financial decisions, or if you can't do the performa, like let's say that you just suck at doing the performa, hire a finance manager. Again, they don't have to be full-time. You can probably find somebody who's part-time, who's really good, Right? Maybe it's somebody who's, you know, they're stay-at-home parents or something like that. And they just don't want to be, you know, stuck in an office all the time, but they do want to contribute, right? You can find somebody who's part-time that'll help you with your finances. If you don't know your finances, again, it's nearly impossible to grow the business. And especially when it comes to the gross margin and your net income, you need budget to be able to reinvest back into the agency, whether that be marketing, whether that be people, whatever. You need profit 
Too many agencies are not making any money. And if nothing else, have profit. And then at the end of the year, give yourself a massive bonus because you guys did so well, right? Bonus out your team. It's so unbelievably important that you manage the finances. Now, I suck at managing the finances. So obviously, I have team members that help me do that. When I made that investment, company grew like crazy, right? Again, I was the bottleneck. I had to get out of the way. I was honest with myself. I said, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to buy, I'm going to hire somebody in this role and they're going to help me fix this problem. And sure enough, they did. It was absolutely fantastic. All right. Next thing to look at, if your employees are happy and if they are quitting, then might want to look at a bringing on a higher HR person. Sorry. You might want to bring on an HR director. Again, you can find these companies. There's outsourcing for that. There's part-time people, but really HR is there to help you keep your team members happy, make sure that everybody's moving in the right direction, making sure that you're hiring the right types of people, making sure that you have a healthy company culture and just keeping people around, right? So like if your team is unhappy or if you don't have the right team, it's nearly impossible to win. You can have the right team and still lose, but it is nearly impossible to win with the wrong team. So if you're not very good at hiring or if you're not good at building company culture, then you know you might want to look at bringing on somebody in the HR role. Last thing is, let's be honest about you as a CEO, right? Are you disciplined? Are you good at planning? Are you good at leading people? Do you treat people well? Like, are you, do your staff believe in the vision? Are you good at creating the vision for the company? If you are not good at these things and you recognize that that's not you, Maybe it's an option that you bring in another CEO and you move yourself into a different role, a different leadership role. Maybe you're better on the operation side. Maybe you're better at just doing the sales, right? Bring in somebody then who can actually be the visionary for the company. What I recommend that you do first is invest in leadership, right? And at the very least, pick up a book, right? Pick up a book on leadership. Whenever I feel like I'm deficient in anything, I immediately go and I get a book and I read it right? Whether it be marketing, whether it be uh, sales, whether it be customer experience, whether it be company culture, I am constantly reading. Right? It's the easiest thing that you could do. It costs very little money. You can do it very, very quickly. And I guarantee you, every time you read a book, you're going to pick up one big idea that's going to help you get one, one step closer to your goal. So on the leadership side, I am shocked as to how many CEOs never actually read books on leadership. It's shocking. So if you feel like you're deficient as a leader, and maybe you don't feel like you're deficient as a leader, but the company is not moving in the right direction, which, hey, get, I hate to break it to you, that means that you are deficient as a leader. If you're deficient as a leader, start investing in leadership. And the easiest thing is to just start reading books on leadership. There's so many good books on leadership. Just grab one, okay? And then worst case scenario, if you realize, hey, I'm not a CEO. I am not good at this. I need somebody else to move into this position. Then maybe you can bring in a CEO that'll help you run the company. One of our agencies actually had that happen. They have a new girlfriend. She ran an agency. She's a fantastic CEO. You know, our client had been working with us. He's a sales guy. He didn't know shit about running a company, right? And he's like, I can't continue to do this. I am the bottleneck. And then he brought his, his girlfriend in as a CEO. Now the company's crushing it absolutely crushing it like night and day from four months ago. So sometimes you just got to be honest with yourself and recognize that, Hey, I'm just not good at this leadership stuff. I'm not good at being a CEO and then just work and fix the problem. So the last thing is that as you're looking at scaling up your labor, you can always find help, right? I, I, it drives me absolutely bananas when I hear people rhetoric and like people don't want to work, right? Maybe that's the case, but who cares? you have a re responsibility to try and find a solution. Right now, you have more access to talent than ever before in history. Everybody's accommodate or is used to working remote. So you have people all over the United States. You have people all over the world that you can reach out to that can help you grow your agency. And you can find them for the budget that you have, right? So if you do your performa and you know your finances and you know your budget, I promise you that you can go out and find exactly who you need for the price that you need. Best recommendation that I have for bringing on people, if you don't have a budget for bringing on somebody full-time, is to hire them part-time and tier their pay. So you create benchmarks 
uh, or milestones for what that individual needs to learn. Because most likely there's going to be a learning period. You got to train them, whatever. So you say after three months, you, when you hit this milestone, you're going to get a pay increase. After you hit this milestone, you're going to get a pay increase. So as that person is now taking on more, you give them a reward, which should make sense because the revenues are growing, the profitability is growing. You have that budget to be able to reinvest in that individual. So it is absolutely possible for you to get out there and hire anybody that you need. No excuses. You might have to be a little bit creative, but I promise you, you can go out there and find the people that you're going to need to be able to help you solve those bottlenecks and grow your agency. So if you have any questions, of course, just reach out to me. We're more than happy to answer any questions about hiring and scaling your labor. You can go to dude school, but that's all for today. Hope that you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you could share it with your friends, family, and basically anyone who will find the same value in this episode that you did. And to get the latest from me, then let's definitely connect on social media. You can go to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash dude agency or Instagram at dudeagency.io, or you can check us out on YouTube on our YouTube channel. And then, of course, you can always visit our website at dudeagency.io, where you can see all of our other episodes of Operation Agency Freedom. You can also register for any live trainings that we have going on on how to run a highly profitable agency. And, of course, you can see how we help digital agencies with the people, the processes, and the education so that they can take on more projects and scale profitably. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.